All right, I was gonna make a video on like all my shakes, but I have way too many and it would take way too long. So I'm just gonna do the one that I use the most. And this is like a Twitch shake, but I add like a slight bit of bounce on it as well. In the beginning, there's two different types. This one's more like, I don't really know how to explain it. One of them is a little bit more aggressive and the other one isn't. It's the same type of shake, just one of them has a blur on it and I'll show you that at the end. But pretty much you're gonna wanna start off with your two clips. I have these two clips here, they're just twixtered, nothing on them, or however many clips you have. Um, once you have those clips, go down to S Shake on Video Effects, and once you find S Shake, you're going to drag the default on there, and if you already have my wiggle preset, and just drag that on there. I have a video on that already, so I'm not going to really try to show it, but this is pretty much it. I don't know if you really need these, but you can watch the other video and put those both on there. And then that should just give it a slight a bit of wiggle. I like to put that on all my clips. And then if you see right here, there's like a mirror blur. To get rid of that, you could just zoom in uh, with the pan and crop. But we're about to put a zoom in and zoom in on it. So I doubt it'll show, so. All right, the next thing is you're gonna wanna scroll up until you see S blur mode curves. And then I have my preset here. I have the preset for the zoom in and zoom out on the other tutorial as well. So you should go check that out. Pretty much you wanna drag these on here and I'll show you how to do these actually. It's pretty much the only settings though. It's not really that much of a preset. All you have to do is copy this. There's nothing down here. So I guess you could just copy it from here as well. So you wanna drag those on both clips. And as always, you wanna click on animate. So you're going to want to go to your key, first keyframe right here. You want to click on it. You want to go forward three keyframes. I click down here just because it's easier, but you can also click on your arrows key. But anyways, one, two, three. Once you're up three, you want to bring this to about 800, I'd say. It's either 800 or 900. Depends on what you want. Uh, I have it more in depth of how to do these zoom ins and zoom outs on like a tutorial. I'll put the thing on the eye right here. You want to go all the way to the end. You want to put it at 0 0.1. You need to put it at 0 0.1 or 0 0.5 or any number really. I just wouldn't go higher than 0 0.5. It's whatever you like better. And then you want to go back three keyframes. So forward three, back three. And you want to put that at one or 1,000. You want to click on this, right click on it, and make it a slow fade. And then you want to do that for every single one except make these fast. So this is the only one that's going to be slow and the rest are going to be fast. So once you've done that to the first uh, clip, it should look something like this. All right, so I pretty much just put it on the wrong clip. It's supposed to be right here. It actually doesn't matter what order you go in. Um, but just for this example, I want it to be the same as the sample I showed. So all I did is just switch it. Same thing. Um, but this is pretty much how it should look. And then you want to go to the second clip now. So this clip already has the uh, S blur mode curves as well. You want to drag that on there. And then you're going to want to click animate again. Go to your first keyframe. And for this one, we're going to put it at 1200. I wouldn't go over 1300 because then you get this mirroring effect. And you don't want to, you don't really want to get that on there because it doesn't look smooth. So put that at 0 0.200, or sorry, 1,200. And you want to go forward three keyframes. And then we're going to put this at 1,000. And then go all the way to the end and put it at 1,200 as well. And you want to go backwards three keyframes. And you want to put that at... This number you can really mess around with. I would usually put it at 0 0.800, especially if your clip is longer. Um, basically what this does is it keeps it like constantly moving where it looks smoother. I wouldn't go higher than 1,900 and I'd probably just keep it at 1,800. And then you wanna do the same thing. Click on this down here, right click on it and make it a slow fade and make these two fast or these three, sorry. A quick way to remember it is uh, the first two are always going to be fast. The last, uh, second to last is going to be slow and then fast. So fast, fast, slow, fast. 
And then I also like to keep it at three keyframes on each one. It just makes it look smoother. So once you've done that, it should look something like this. And as I mentioned earlier, there's no more like mirror effect right here. So you don't always have to get rid of it right off the bat. You can just see how your clip looks. If it's still there for you, I would either zoom in more here or go to your pan and crop and zoom it in. So once you got this point, which is just to zoom in and zoom out, you're just gonna wanna add your shakes now. Also, I'd like to mention that if you want more in depth of how to do better zoom in and zoom outs or like a double zoom out, etc., etc., I have a full tutorial on just the zoom in and zoom outs um, that goes way more in depth than this. It's just a quick overview just to give you the effect. All right, so once you have your zoom in and zoom out, you're gonna wanna head and scroll down to S shake. So once you get to S shake, you wanna click on it and you wanna click on default. If you already have this preset, uh, you can click on it. It's the last preset that I used on my other video with the zoom in and shake with the bouncy one. And you just wanna drag that on. If you don't, then just copy these settings right now. So grab a default. If you don't have it, if you have it, just drag it on. So once you have it on there, if you have a default one, go ahead and copy these settings. I'm gonna uh, undo all of these real quick. If you do have it for my last video, then you can just skip ahead. All right, here's a quick editor's note because I forgot to mention this, but once you've copied all the settings, go ahead and name it something right here and just click save preset. It's gonna be way easier. It's gonna pop up right here anyways. And if it doesn't pop up yet, click out of it and then click back on S shake and it should be there because you're gonna need it for the next step. All right, so once you drag it to the first keyframe, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put this at 0 0.200 is usually what I like to keep it at just to test it out. And then I usually like to go near the end. So it doesn't really matter exactly where, as long as it's near the end and go ahead and put that at zero. I don't really use the fast or slow on these, but you can if you want to. And what this should do is give you some sort of like bounce effect on there. So as you can see, it gives it like a slight bounce to it. All right, so once you've seen how it looks right here and you like it, or if you don't change it up a bit, and you want to drag the preset right here and then you're going to do the same thing i like to change it back to 0.2 because again i'm not trying to have a really aggressive shake with the bounce yet so then you want to click animate same thing first keyframes right here you just want to go near the end and just change this to like zero you want to test that out so just go ahead and render that I like how it looks, so we're just gonna keep it like this. If you don't like how it looks, you can just change this uh, where it ends and see where you want it to end. If you want it to be shorter, put it up here. If you want it to be longer, put it right here. Then we're gonna move on to the Atzel shake. So for this one, it's not gonna be on S shake. You wanna scroll up till you see S dissolve shake right here. All right, so you wanna go ahead and grab the default and then just drag it on your first clip. All right, so once you've done that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and copy these settings real quick. I also like to quickly mention that these shakes, like the Twitch shake right here, is not mine. I got this from Akuma, so y'all give credit to him if you use it or whatever. So once you've copied these settings, you wanna go ahead and click on animate with the amplitude and animate with the frequency. So you wanna scroll down to see this right here. So you wanna click on that first keyframe and you wanna go ahead and go four keyframes forward. So one, two, three, four. And then you wanna change this to 0 0.500 and this down here to 0. Point, sorry to 10 and then you want to go ahead and count from this keyframe forward 10 more so so once you're forward 10 keyframes from this keyframe so in total this would be from the beginning to the end 14 keyframes 
or from here to here in 10 keyframes. You go on to go ahead and change this to zero and change this one to eight. Then you want to go to the first keyframe and change all of these to fast. So remember, click on this, right click and click fast. And you want to do the same thing to the second keyframe, both of them to fast, and then you can just leave this one alone. So now it should look something like this. All right, so then remember also go to your first keyframe now and you want to save this. So go ahead and name it whatever you want. And then you just want to click save preset. And then when you load this preset in again, it's going to start off with these numbers. So that way you only have to worry about this next one and this one. So once you saved it, just go ahead and look at it again. If this is how you like it, then just keep how it is. What you can do is extend this and extend these or change the numbers up a bit if you want. And that'll ch obviously change how the shake looks. This one just lasts longer, gives it more of effect, I guess. So it really just depends on how you want to do things. But for this example, we're just going to go with how I showed you. All right, so if you save the preset, then just drag the preset to the next clip. There's also a little hack if you want to know. Uh, might save you time. Even Not even just for this effect, but for any effect. You can also just scroll down click on the first keyframe hold shift and click on the last one and then right click and click copy so now what you'll do is go to your first keyframe once this shake effect is on here you want to scroll down i would click animate on dissolve amount just because you don't use this and then you click on this first keyframe hold shift right click and click paste and then It'll, nothing will pop up right so then you're just gonna click and then everything will pop up here and then you just want to go up to here dissolve amount and just click on this x so that will get rid of this because you never even animated the dissolve amount it stays the same and now you just have your shake here and now it should look just like the other shake this is a quick way to save your time or you can just do it manually as well and in this case, it's literally the same. So this shake will stay the same unless you want to change it yourself, like make it last longer, make it end way later. And it just depends on yourself, right? However you want to do your shake, but that's pretty much how I do it. So now this is kind of the finished product, but there is something else you can add to this. So for this one, we have the same exact thing on this as this one, but all we're going to do is go ahead and scroll up until you see S blur and drag a default on this. So once you have the default on this, go ahead and just copy these settings. I got this one from Akuma as well. This is how you do his full shake, I guess. So once you've copied these settings, you want to go ahead and just click on blur amount to animate that. So once you click animate, go ahead and scroll down to your first keyframe and you want to go forward five keyframes. One, two, three, four, five. Once you've gone here, you want to bring this down to zero. You want to go ahead and right click the first one and make that fast. And that should be fine just right there. And then you should get something slightly like this. And then you can go ahead and just either copy and paste and put that to the next one. Or you can just drag it on and do it the same way. And then you should get something like this. There's not that much difference again. All it is is kind of just creates more of a blur rather than just like a shake. It just depends on how you want to use it. And then for this blur, you can change it. You can change how long it lasts. You also can change how aggressive the blur is just by moving the blur amount. But I mean, it's up to you, but this is how you do it on the shakes at least I use. So then all together, you kind of have like a twitch shake with a slight bit of bounce. The bounce kind of just gives the shake more impact and like more movement. And obviously the wiggle c keeps it constantly moving. That's pretty much how you do it. If you have any questions on like zoom ins or zoom outs or like you want to know how to do like a double zoom out or a double zoom in, you can watch my other tutorial on that. And then I also have one for all the other presets I use in this video. If you didn't really get them or I guess don't understand them that much. I'm probably going to make a base shake tutorial for like multiple of my other shakes, but this is kind of like my most 
use shake I guess you could say so this is why I made a separate tutorial on it but I might either do that or I'm probably gonna do like an actual tutorial like on how to make an actual edit or AMV so like from beginning to end and more beginnerish friendly type stuff and I think probably a rotation edit and then we'll see what happens but that's pretty much it if you have any questions just ask me in the comment section and I'll see if I can answer them and hopefully this helped I guess <laughs>